By the end of 20th century, a wave of drought hit most of the eastern provinces of Indonesia, badly affecting crop harvesting. Some malnutrition did occur. Since then, the government of Indonesia has been providing food supplies and care for monitoring of children growth even through international support. Although all over Asia food production has been increasing sadly, some of the United Nations agencies are still disseminating scaring reports about the trend of hunger worldwide. At the beginning of the 21st century, the WHO Multicenter Growth Reference Study issued the WHO Growth Standard Charts for 0 to 15 years old children. Such standardized one-size-fits-all model of charts were proposed as official references to worldwide, no matter the ethnic group concerned. The charts were drawn up by sampling only 1,737 children out of six countries. Surprisingly, a. No southeastern country was included. b. The number of children sampled was not even proportional to the amount of population of each selected country, as it ought to. According to WHO's Country Profile Indicators on Nutrition, issued in 2010, the Ear with Displayed paper evaluates the children growth in Indonesia. There were considered separately the cumulative charts of 1. Underweight children, below two standard deviations in the weight per age chart, 2. Stunting children, below two standard deviations in the high parade chart, and 3. Western children, below two standard deviations from the weight per high chart. The three of them were compared to the WHO standard charts one by one. Actually, the cumulative charts uncouple weight and high from individuals. This methodology allows conclusions only on weight or high as a standalone data, but no inference on nutritional status is permitted. For this purpose, the populations ought to have been sampled in such a way that any unit of the sample, namely the child, had to be completely investigated as one person with his own weight and high couplet. A second bias. It was given for granted that weight and high were related only to the nutrition determinants, whereas literature provides evidences of many environmental factors more, such as sunlight daily exposure, average oxygen concentration, air pollution, physical activity, sanitation, etc. However, beyond environmental factors, the genetic makeup such as the insulin growth factor 1 and 2 regulators, still stand out as the major determinants of stature. The conclusions of the paper are even more disputable. Stunting arises in the gestational stage, and therefore supplementary feeding to pregnant women is recommended. Finally, it is mentioned in Worth that 1. In the highest quality monograph, the term stunting does not even appear. 2. No biochemical marker is found out in the majority of low stature children. In conclusion, unlike underweight and wasting, stunting does not seem to be a well established nosographic pathological entity. Owing to the above mentioned biased approach, Alarming figures about stunting in several provinces of Indonesia were issued. Such figures mislead readers to hold them as a ranking of malnutrition. UNICEF even ventured that because of the latest COVID-19 upheavals, two millions of under five children in Indonesia, namely the 10% of the whole under five population, would undergo severe wasting. But do these predictions match the data collected in previous historical situation of famine? Definitely the answer is no, because even in the last draft and war insecurity born famine occurrence in Chad in 2010, the maximum percentage of several malnourished under five children was 5%. For that country, 
This was a real catastrophe because such 5% usually brings along an additional 30% of moderate underweight children. In such contexts, hunger would be visible outdoors. In conclusion, the predictions from UNICEF, often based on insufficient or inaccurate data, may push governments to implement top-down approach programs that are not only unnecessary, but also provenly of poor outcome and breaking down the existing social system. Even if cumulative national child growth charts were taken into consideration separately, high differences are spotted between high per age charts versus weight per age charts that ought to have arisen doubts to the researchers. The weight per age charts diverge little from WHO standard charts. The high per age diverge a lot. Thus, on average, the body mass index seems to be roughly normal. This issue sets against widespread malnutrition, unless we do not assume that hypoprotein malnutrition, quashorkor, in which weight is caused by accumulation of water and sodium in the extracellular spaces, has massively been hit in Indonesia. Actually, the last case of quashorkor reported date back to 1953. Kwashoko is a disorder in which the intake of carbohydrates is still good, but proteins are missing in the diet. For instance, exclusive feeding of manioc cassava, as it happens in some areas of Africa and South America, but unlike Indonesia. The diagnosis of Kwashoko is already plain at the sample site of the patient, Moreover, whenever Indonesia is compared to other southeastern countries in single nutrient deficiencies such as vitamin A and vitamin D, Indonesia is not in a worse position, and that is against the assumption of widespread chronic malnutrition. Also, the World Bank charts about Indonesian nutrition state are puzzling. Underweight has been decreasing since 2002, but wasting has been persisting. In case of widespread malnutrition, why does this occur? Upon supplementary feeding program implementation, wasting is supposed to decrease the first. Whenever a genetically short-statured child is overfed, he is expected to build up subcutaneous fat and turns himself into obese. Not surprisingly, the percentage of overweight in under five children population increased. Pregnant women overfeeding is supposed to harm even more. Overfeeding a short statured pregnant woman with a narrow birth canal might provoke mellitus diabetes at an early stage of pregnancy, insulin resistance, hyperinsulinism, and finally fatal macrosomia. The combination of fatal macrosomia and narrow birth canal drives to cesarean section delivery. Although there is no evidence of cause-effect relationship between overfeeding and cesarean section deliveries, and even if other factors may concur, it is indisputable that the cesarean section delivery rate in Indonesia increased from 4% in 1998 to 18.5% in 2017. At last, in 2018, Aman Pulungan and co-workers built up the Indonesia National Standard Growth Charts by sampling only Indonesian children. By those charts, it was plain that Indonesian children of both sexes were of shorter stature in comparison to WHO standard growth charts, but on average not malnourished, as there is no difference in the body mass index. Thereafter, criticism arose about supplementary feeding policies previously implemented. As a matter of fact, also the other countries of Southeast Asia were taken in by international agencies standardized one-size-fits-all models, which are frequently cited as being contextually inapplicable or inadequate in understanding local realities. Enjoying proven standard reference charts is not enough by itself. The inference on the nutritional status is to be established on an individual base. 
Firstly, inspecting the child is mandatory, and any cause of pathological osteitis has to be spotted out. Chromosome 21 trisomy, Turner syndrome, achondroplasia, etc. In such a physical examination, along with the estimation of the cranial circumference and the mid-upper arm circumference, the health professional can spot structural deformations of the body, such as the, the swollen abdomen and the anasarca of the quashorcure. Secondly, the weight per age is to be pinpointed. If it falls in the normal range, the child is normal. If it is below the two standard deviations, then the high estimation enables to plot the chart weight per high. By that figure, the differential diagnosis between malnourished body mass index below 18 and short stature, normal body mass index, is easily prompted. The parent hides based the algorithms aiming at the prediction of the child's final stature are of poor value for two reasons. One, because they provide a too wide range of variability, more than 15 centimeters. Two, because they cannot separate pathological from genetically physiological states. The issue of children's malnutrition in Indonesia has to be challenged with an individual medicine approach. Any children should be completely diagnosed separately. The public health approach by going through cumulative charts and wrongly inferring on nutritional status badly affected the correct social communication and the public health measures to implement.